This video is part of a series on the XV6 operating system kernel. In this video, I'm going to talk about system calls and how they can be made from user mode code. I'll start by looking at a small C program that makes a couple of system calls. And then I'll look at the program called init code, which is the very first code that is executed in user mode. This program is written in assembly code, so be prepared. We'll see a little assembly code in this video. But let's start with the C program. Here is the code for kill. It is a command that I'm sure you're familiar with. We see that it makes calls to some library functions, fprintf and a2i are used here. It also makes some calls to exit and kill, which are system calls. It passes arguments. Uh, in this case, it passes a one to the system call exit. Uh, system calls can return values, but we don't see that happening here. This program includes uh, user.h. These two are not so interesting, but user.h is, is relevant here because it contains the function prototypes for both the library functions and the system calls. So here's the code for user.h. Okay, and it does a pretty short program, a short file. It contains function prototypes for the various system calls, and it contains function prototypes for the library functions. So you can see each one of the 21 system calls that XV6 supports is listed here. So for example, we see exit and we see kill. Each of these takes a single parameter uh, and we also see that the system calls return values. This attribute stuff here is a bit of compiler magic that uh, tells the compiler that this particular function is guaranteed never to return, and so this might allow the compiler to do some optimizations. We also see function prototypes for the library functions. The XV6 system doesn't include a whole lot of library functions, a normal uh, operating system would have hundreds of functions, but we do see prototypes for fprintf, printf, some string functions uh, like string length, and we, need, we see uh, a to i and some other things. We're not going to look at the code for these right now, but these are in a file called ulib.c. We're more interested in the function code, functions for these system calls. There is a small function for each one of these, and these are all collected into one file called usys.s, which is an assembly language program. The function codes for each one of these functions that is in the assembly language is actually generated automatically by a Perl script. So let's take a look at that. So here we've got usys.pl, and this script is going to generate some assembly code. And here I'm showing what the assembly code is generated, and it goes into this file usys.s, which will be assembled and linked with the program like that we're compiling, like kill.c. So what do we see here? Well, we uh, start with a couple print statements, uh, a comment here, and then a pound sign include. And here I'm showing what gets produced, our comment, and the pound sign include. We're including something called syscall.h. And then for each of the 21 system calls, we are going to generate some code here. And what do we do? Well, for each one of them, we create a dot global statement. Here's the dot global with the particular name. In this example, it's, it's open. So uh, the name that we're dealing with is open. Then we have a label, open colon, which is right here. And then we have three instructions. Li is load immediate. Ecall is environment call and ret is return. 
So we see those, Li, Ecol, and Rep. Li, A7, and then again, sys underscore, and then our name, sys underscore open. So for each one of these, we'll have a very small function. This function will execute a load immediate instruction, which will move some constant into A7. Sys open is just a number, and we see that we are including syscall.h. Well, here is syscall.h. All it has is a collection of defined statements, and for each of the 21 system calls, it associates a number. In our example, we're looking at open, so we see that open has a system has a number of 15. So all this does is move a 15 into register A7 and then execute the eCall instruction. eCall will end execution in user mode, switch to kernel mode, and will uh, the kernel will execute uh, some code that will do whatever this uh, is involved for opening a file. And ultimately, it will return to user mode and execute the next instruction, which is a return. Now, we are passing arguments in the open system call. So if we look at open here, we see that we pass two arguments, pointer to the file name and uh, the mode that we want to open that file in, and we return a value. Arguments are passed in the A registers, the first argument in A0, the second argument in A1, and if there are additional arguments in A2, A3, and so on. A return value will appear in A0, and the kernel will do that. It will expect arguments in A0, 1, 2, and so on, and upon return from the kernel, the result will be an A0. And that's why this little bit of code here doesn't mess with A0, A1, A2, and so on. They are assumed to already be in the registers when this is invoked, and the result from the kernel in A0 will stay in A0, and it will be returned to uh, whoever invoked the open system call. Okay, next let's take a look at initcode.s. This is a user mode program. In fact, it's somewhat special because it is the very first code that's executed in user mode by the kernel. And here we see the code for this program. It's pretty short. Uh, it includes systemcall.h. So in fact, we make a couple system calls here. We call the exec system call and the exit system call. Now, what does this little program do? I've tried to show it in um, this form here. It simply calls the exact system call, passing a pointer to the file name and a pointer to an array, and the array contains two elements. This first argument is a pointer to a sequence of bytes, backslash i n i t null byte. And argv is a pointer to an array of two elements. The first is a pointer to a backslash init. And the second thing is the null, the terminating null. Uh, these are each one byte, and this is actually uh, eight bytes, a double word. And it's not shown very clearly because they look like the same size here. If exec returns, which normally it would not, but if for some reason this file doesn't exist, then it would return. And what do we do then? Well, we invoke exit. We're not even, and then if exit should return, which it definitely will not do, uh, this program contains a go-to statement, which we'll call it again. Uh, so we don't expect that to happen. So now let's look at the actual code. We're including syscall.h. That is our file that includes numbers that associates uh, a value with each one of the sys constants. So here we're using sysexec, that's number seven. We're also using sysexit, that's number two. Okay, and what do we have? Well, we are executing three instructions and then making the system call. 
LA loads the address into A0 of variable init, which is down here. This second instruction loads A1 with argv, which is the address of this down here. Here we have exactly what's going on right here. Init and these bytes are in argv and these two words. So here we have init, backslash init, null byte, and here we have argv, which is a, contains the address uh, of init, and it contains a zero uh, with an alignment statement here. So we load in the two arguments, and we set a seven to the code number for the exact system call, and we make the E call. E stands for environment call. And then if that should return, we then have the code to call the exit system call. We load into A7 the code number, which was two, for the exit system call. And then we perform the system call. And if that should return, we just jump here and keep repeating it. Exit happens to take a parameter. It takes a single argument, which is the exit code or return code. We don't even bother to load A0 with anything, so who knows what it would actually be, but hopefully exit, uh, sorry, exec will never return. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next video.